Hi, hi everyone. Welcome to UTA Planetarium's next live star stream. My name is Levant Gürdemir. I am the UTA Planetarium Director uh, and I'm here in my planetarium office with uh, program coordinator Jim Bader. And this is uh, today we are going to talk about night sky. I know it's cloudy outside and probably um, it is going to rain for the uh, remainder of the day, but sometimes these kind of rainy days end up with great clear skies uh, well air actually cleans the air a little bit uh, uh, takes all the dust down and then uh, it opens up for clear skies and if, especially if the temperature drops down a little bit uh, it will clear the humidity and uh, it may be perfect observing conditions for for that reason we thought it would be best to give some stargazing tips to you all I would like to while well, we'll introduce a new software of course um, you may have no idea where to look well the eyes are great detectors for the observation you can just go into your backyard and or find a, just a dark spot dark park for example where you first need to feel safe and then you can look at the night sky and you can see amazing things so uh, if you don't have access to night sky in the dark sky or you would like to do some preparation work uh, we have a great software that is free and open to the community uh, you can download it to your computer and use it and that planetarium uh, software is called stellarium so uh, it looks like this when you launch it on your computer uh, so i'm not going to spend too much time on uh, how to download it, uh, how to install it, it is, but it is very straightforward. Uh, you don't have any high uh, computer skills to do so, uh, but when you launch the application, you see a screen like this. Uh, first, of course, you need to set your location, and our location is set to currently uh, Fort Worth, Texas. Fort Worth, Texas was in the, in the menu, but you can also uh, manually choose your location and set it to wherever you are. We are currently in Arlington. Fort Worth sky won't be a lot different. So one thing you would notice here is a indication of date. It is set for today and time. And time we, uh, right now we set it for after sunset. It is currently 9.21 p.m. At that time, when you look at the night sky, uh, and roughly we are looking at the south direction. So there is a marker here, a cardinal point, S stands for south, and you won't see such marker in the real sky, you shouldn't. And uh, then, uh, uh, but roughly you can guess which direction is south, and if you need help, uh, you can right after sunset you can find the direction of sunset sun sets from west direction so turn your uh, sunset points turn your face to sunset and your left ha uh, hand will be pointing south direction so that's easy all right let's go back to south what you see on the south, high above in the sky, there is the, the brightest object of the night sky, the moon. 
moon is it's in quarter phase and when you click on the moon you see a lot of information over here on the the left hand and there is a lot of astronomical information if you do not understand all of them that's fine you will not need them or use them ever in your life probably but uh, there is uh, the type of object it's a moon uh, well as we said before in the previous live streams we the moon is a moon the only moon of earth and we did not give a specific name to our moon we just call it the moon i think it's for it works great for simplicity in the meantime during the uh, live stream if you have any questions for me please feel free to drop your questions in the comments chat so i will keep an eye on that and i will try to answer as much as i can so uh, this uh, live stream is meant to be interactive and please make it interactive so a uh, type of the moon is moon uh, magnitude here it's uh, showing you how bright it is uh, lower that number is the, the brighter the object and currently it is minus 11 so minus 11 is a very bright so if it was like four or five it is a fainter object uh, so we have absolute magnitude and right ascension and declination those are the astronomical coordinates that astronomers use to locate the objects in the night sky and here is the distance from the sun uh, we always give the solar system distances in uh, units of au it is similar to like we use inch and miles and yards in our regular life uh, in astronomy uh, we use au which stands for astronomical units one astronomical unit is the distance between earth and the sun so it's a mean distance uh, that means right now the moon is uh, to the sun slightly farther from the sun and this is the distance to earth again in terms of AUs and also in the parentheses you also find this information in kilometers if you are wondering how far an object is in the sky it is a great tool uh, you can find out well uh, there is also moon age uh, the age of the moon is is actually the, the face of the moon uh, right now it is fixing gpus and the, the moon uh, goes to ages between zero we call it zero age when it's new moon and uh, 29 when it is again uh, completes the one phase cycle and becomes a new moon again so uh, approximately when it is about 14 days old it is full moon so moon you can think like uh, borns and dies every month uh, so the age cycle is between 0 and 24 and if you would like to take a closer look uh, to the moon you can uh, first we can just bring it down over here and there is a telescope tool over here so this is the eyepiece of the telescope uh, so we click on that and immediately it opens a telescope window and it shows us the telescopic view of the moon you can see craters and the first quarter face to me it is the first it is the best time to look at the moon with a telescope because um, well the moon is immediately uh, visible right after sunset it is high in the sky the well, higher the object is the better for astronomical observations because the uh, the uh, the earth's air will treat uh, the higher objects in the skies better than the lower objects in the sky so you have less effect of the air if the object is high above so uh, th the observation conditions uh, are much better at for the objects higher in the sky and also when you have a phase on the moon uh, well this line over here that separates the, the dark side of the moon and the bright side of the moon we call it terminator line Along the terminator line, you can see the craters 
uh, there is a great shadow casted uh, inside of the craters that makes a remarkable um, picture on your telescope. Uh, you can select different telescopes. You can match it to your telescope to, for accuracy. So you can uh, take a good guess of how the objects will look in your telescope, uh, which probably uh, it can be a great uh, another uh, another uh, time uh, to talk about uh, how the telescopes work. Okay, um, so let's take a look uh, back from, uh, let's go back to our regular view. And uh, Jessica asks, what is the green thing that says uh, June Scoots? Uh, well, it is a um, meteor shower, Stellarium uh, likes marking the, uh, the some, uh, the, like a comet event and the, the, the meteor shower uh, event. And usually, the um, if the name is ending with something like IDS, uh, it is indication for meteor shower because we put uh, IDS uh, at the end of the, the 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 location name. For example, if it is in a Perseus constellation, uh, we call it Perseids. Uh, it, if, if the meteor shower is originating from the constellation Orion, we call it Orionids. So those are the indication or names for meteor showers. When you click on that, you can see it says type meteor shower. Uh, this is a, not a great one, but uh, later in the sky, uh, the one from uh, Aquarius constellation called Aquariodids has a better... Uh, meteor shower rate for tonight but it is not until midnight so uh, likely you may find some uh, great uh, information uh, information uh, on that in the later of the, the live stream so we can talk about if we have time so also uh, our moderator uh, updates me on the, the Perseids it peaks on uh, August 12th and 13th so uh, next month, uh, just next month, not far away, only uh, 13, 14 days away, uh, we may see a great meteor shower in the sky. Now, thank you for your question, Jessica. And if others uh, who are watching, uh, please feel free to drop your questions to me. And uh, besides the moon, right around the moon, you will see uh, this little red star over here and Teres, it is the brightest star of constellation Scorpius. Uh, Scorpius is actually easy to recognize. Just look at between Antares and the moon. You will see three bright stars. So this forms the head of the scorpion and the pinchers on each side and has a long and curvy tail like this. And here there's a representation, great representation of constellations. We can draw them uh, and you can see it obviously looks like a scorpion the name of the constellation is scorpius so let's go behind scorpius and here there is two objects i get a lot of questions about this what is that the two bright star next to each other in the sky those are not stars very bright point of light sources and that's the great sky showcase. And they are Jupiter and Saturn. The brighter one is Jupiter, and the dimmer one is Saturn, the planets of our uh, solar system. So, uh, Brexton asks, uh, do you have lectures at the planetarium? Yes, uh, our public shows in the planetarium are pretty much like what I'm doing here. Of course, in the planetarium, we have a greater environment. So all the, the sky you see is actually arching over audience's head. In a great dome, we have a higher resolution and projectors and the software is much more advanced. We can actually not only point planets like here, we can also go land on them virtually. Um, so. Unfortunately, Planetarium Theater is currently closed, 
we are not letting anyone in the planetarium theater but i promise when the situation is a lot better and it is safe to do so i will open back the, the planetarium theater uh, for public shows and we planetarium staff all missed you a lot here is the uh, planet the greatest planet giant planet of the solar system jupiter so let's click on jupiter it says immediately type planet here and you can find all other information but what i'm interested in is how does it look in my telescope and it looks like this let's actually uh, zoom in a little bit i'm using keyboard shortcuts to do so it is easy to find keyboard shortcuts and even it is in the help file so uh, jupiter shows great band structures over here we talked about jupiter and all other gas giant planets in one of the previous live streams if you recall uh, so there's a lot of information you can go and watch that live stream again and uh, we are also making those live streams recordings available on our YouTube channel too so you can always go back it's a great material so uh, what's interesting over here is um, well the the Jupiter is the form uh, they are they are a great band structure and there is also uh, its moons now the four moons uh, as you know Jupiter has Io Europa Ganymede and Callisto and those are all visible about well, Callisto is far away here it is outside of the telescope field so this is what you will practice when you are using a telescope to look at Jupiter you need to pan your telescope a little bit to find that moon so you can click on each moon and uh, O shortcut will uh, tell me its orbit so you can see Io has the the closest orbit in around Jupiter so how about Europa click O and it will show me the orbit of Europa uh, if you remember Europa is an icy moon so there is an icy crust and potentially there may be liquid water underneath of the ice so Europa may be like and maybe a frozen lake and of course we are wondering if there is any living creatures underneath of that uh, on the liquid water layer liquid water is very important for life well perhaps we'll talk about the uh, water and its importance for your life next week so wait i have a surprise for you wait until the the end of the video okay so jupiter is great so you can discover jupiter on your own but on uh, over here i have saturn so saturn is another great target and saturn uh, is the second largest planet and it features a great ring system so uh, it is pretty small over here but i need to change the lens of my telescope so there's a great virtual telescope accessory toolbox over here so i can put any lens i want and currently my telescope is a 14 inch no 16 inch meat which matches to our observatory telescope at uta and patricia says can we uh, see comets uh, yes with this software i will show you in a second how to do so you can do it on your own if you wish and uh, the brexton asks what will the next mission to mars consist of will it be manned uh, let me answer this question real quick uh, unfortunately the next uh, mars mission is not going to be a manned mission However, the next uh, Mars mission is actually launching this Thursday. It's called Mars Perseverance. Uh, and there were actually another two uh, was launched uh, to the, the, the Mars. Uh, and just last week, uh, we had a 
uh, another mission, international mission launched, and the next NASA mission is set for Thursday, and hopefully uh, all the weather conditions and the technical conditions will be okay. As you, uh, if you watched the, the, the SpaceX launch uh, a couple months ago, uh, they had a, uh, some uh, weather-related issue in the first one, so it had to be canceled, and hopefully this one won't be canceled and it will be launched. All right, great. Um, and let's go back to Saturn. I was talking about the Saturn. I will zoom in a little bit. So in my telescopic view, I, have, I can see the great ring system of Saturn. It is certainly remarkable to look at. Well, it's not common. Uh, it is very common that uh, first time watchers always uh, blamed uh, astronomers by uh, showing a sticker, uh, illuminated sticker in front of the telescope because that can't be Saturn, it's beautiful. No, it is real. When you look through a Saturn, and a good thing about Saturn is almost with any size and any price telescope, you can see the rings of Saturn. It is certainly a great planet. And uh, some of the moons you can see tonight uh, we have Enceladus here we talked about in great detail in the previous live star streams this is what NASA said the most potential place for uh, habitability so if you are looking for a life in the solar system I think our main focus is gonna going to be this moon over here and Dione over here another great moon of Saturn and let's go back let's go quit from our telescopic view and here uh, there was a, a question about comet well it will appear just like these it may be in different color uh, but the comets will also appear like these so let's turn to north direction and see what we got at north so north direction has a lot of constellations one of the constellation well um, let's turn off these drawing lines because it may be a little confusing uh, it, it is better if you learn this way so there are seven bright stars high above in the sky and we call this this constellation the Big Dipper well if you draw the lines this part really looks like a big spoon in the sky so we call it the Big Dipper. Big Dipper is the great tool to find a very specific, special and specific star, the North Star. How do we do it? So we use the, these two stars of the Big Dipper and draw a line like this. And then we find here the North Star. It is not very bright star. And especially the big cities like Arlington, it is difficult to see. So, um, well, the North Star is directly sitting on the north direction. So, if you lost your navigation at night, hopefully that won't happen. But you can find North Star. At least you can find out whether you are going in the north direction or whether you are going in the south direction. So, knowing the sky is great because... Uh, I was driving uh, the other day and I lost my uh, navigation so and I, I had no idea whether I was driving to north or south but I know I supposed to drive in the south direction to go home so my phone wasn't with me uh, and uh, my car had digital compass so uh, first I relied on the car compass and I realized it is showing me the wrong direction uh, because I looked at the sky, I looked at the, the, the sun's orientation and I quickly realized that car compass is guiding me in the wrong direction. So it is always great to have some sky knowledge. All right, um, in the uh, north side, when you look in the sky, by the way, the North Star is part of Little Dipper and I am running out of time. So I need to wrap this up a little bit. So here you can find three great stars the constellations are very easy to recognize for example this is Cygnus the Swan constellation with a bright star Deneb 
So this constellation is where we discovered the first black hole. It is called Cygnus X1. Well, X is putting a little bit mystery and we uh, named the first black holes with the usually uh, names X or the name at least included X. So Cygnus X1 was the first um, weird object. It turned out to be a black hole later. And here is Vega and it is located in this uh, rectangular or parallelogram constellation called Lyra. Uh, to some, Lyra is a harp. And here is another star, Altair, and the Altair is uh, another bright star in the constellation Aquila. These three bright stars are very noticeable and it is forming a triangle. We call this triangle Summer Triangle. And the summer triangle is visible high in the sky during summer months. So that's a great calendar marker. Uh, I'm more interested in, in this constellation over here, Lyra the Harp, because there are great objects in this constellation if I have access to a telescope. The first object I will be looking at is, is uh, called uh, uh, Eta Lyra. Uh, so let's use my telescope. It is a double star. So if you would like to see a double star, so it is double star means actually uh, it is different from binary stars. Two stars are close to each other. So you can see them as like twins and uh, the binary stars are different. Binary stars, they orbit around each other. So when we say doubles, we are not talking about binary stars. Another object of interest in here is located somewhere around here let's see if i can use my astronomer skills and find it manually rather than searching this is not visible to naked eye but this object is a great object so i need a little bit more greater area uh, to look at but it is somewhere around here I found it right here. So uh, let me zoom in a little bit. In your telescope, it may surprise you. There is an object like this. And the reason it's moving is because our time is moving and we are using a powerful telescope to look at. So um, this object is called Planetary Nebula. The, this one is specifically named as Ring Nebula. Ring, its shape. And the nebula is a Latin word for dust. So it is actually a stardust, ring-shaped stardust. So what is that stardust is about? It's actually a dying star. And uh, the dying star just uh, ejected all the gas, pushed all the gas. The gas is still hot and glows. And at the center, what we don't see in this picture is a white dwarf star dying and cooling down. The, the star still has heat energy. It is radiating the heat energy and feeding the gas uh, to glow, but the star itself is dying. Our sun will likely look this way to some others on different planets uh, because we won't be here uh, probably after six billion years I'm talking about after six billion years somebody looking at the Sun with a telescope and Sun may look like this and there is a great um, a lot more that you can discover on your own uh, one of the feature you can see if you are interested in deep sky objects like the ring nebula uh, there is an option that you can turn on uh, which calls uh, for deep sky objects. It is over here. I clicked on this uh, object and it turned on a lot of green markers and each green marker is a potential telescopic target for a deep sky object. Uh, let's find a few. For example, uh, there is one over here. Let's click on that and it says planetary system. You can use your telescope to find out what it looks like on your telescope. Some of them may not look interesting. So this is actually, yes, exoplanet system. So there's a star, there is a 
orbiting planet or planets around it. Uh, but there is no way we can visually see these type of planets with our telescopes. So we need a different type of uh, system, uh, different type of uh, telescope. I mean, the, we need to do scientific uh, data analysis to discover these uh, planets. And uh, the Kepler satellite, before it died, uh, done a remarkable job about uh, doing uh, or finding, discovering uh, planets outside of the solar system. Uh, M39 uh, is, for example, this one I clicked and it said open star cluster. So let's see what it looks like. And you can also find these objects, uh, well, it doesn't look like great one uh, through a telescope. Let's find a better one. There are great globular star clusters. And the globular star cluster means uh, it's a young star cluster or the, just a group of stars born from a gas cloud, born from a nebula. Uh, so our uh, sun, for example, uh, our sun was also born in such cluster. We don't, know, we don't know which cluster it was. That's a mystery. Uh, but there's, for example, Ptolemy's cluster. Uh, let's take a look at that. And here, the, its telescopic view will be, it, it is looking more like a planetary cluster. Okay. So I'm going over time. But um, if you don't have any questions, uh, I have a surprise, as I said at the beginning, surprise for you because next week I'm bringing a scientist over here. So we talked about planetary systems and planets outside of our solar system. We are going to be talking about exoplanets. Exoplanets is the name for uh, extrasolar planet systems. So um, here with me, uh, UTA's professor, Dr. Manfred Kunz, uh, and we'll talk about the habitable zones and extrasolar planets and uh, and also uh, we are going to touch to the uh, search for life in the universe if you have any questions uh, let us know uh, just engage with us in the, the Facebook and direct your questions so we can get them ready for you and uh, even during the live stream you will get the opportunity to uh, ask your questions directly to either myself or our guest speaker, Dr. Manfred Kunz. And do you teach this? Braxton asks. Uh, I, uh, done, I have done astronomy teaching for a few years, um, formally, uh, at the university at UTA. Uh, but because of my uh, position at the planetarium, I more like do informal teaching. I do I do presentations for public. I do presentations for K through 12 schools and field trips. Uh, but formally, yes, I have some experience in uh, teaching uh, university level astronomy students too. Uh, can we do a zoom on the Andromeda galaxy? Jenny asks. Uh, thanks, Jenny. Yes, absolutely. Uh, for Andromeda, I actually, I'm way over time. I'm sorry for that, but I cannot miss this. Uh, Andromeda is going to be, it's actually here, rising. Let's forward the time a little bit. You need to wait until early morning hours and maybe after midnight. So um, here you go. Andromeda galaxy just... Uh, has risen from northeast direction and let's see we are at midnight hours uh, midnight is great to see Andromeda and here click on that and click on your telescopic view and it will bring now obviously it is not going to look at on your telescope like this because this is an image from Hubble Space Telescope and even it's a combined image of Hubble Space Telescope but yes uh, that's the, the closest galaxy to Milky Way. Uh, you can find a lot of great information here. For example, its distance is only two and a half million light years. 
remember we talked uh, we uh, communicated about the the distances in the solar system with astronomical units and uh, when we go to stars and the galaxies then even astronomical unit is not enough anymore we are introducing another distance unit which is light years light is the fastest thing in the universe it travels one year a distance and that distance is called one light year it's a great distance it is very hard to describe with kilometers and miles and uh, yards etc but it is very useful when we are communicating about the distances of objects in the universe well great presentation and great chat with you all uh, thanks for watching and again uh, don't forget about my next speaker next week and i will see you here next week same day tuesday same time 1 p.m here have a great day